Without the modernist movement, the world would be a completely different place. Many of the principles and ideas that were developed during modernism are still extremely relevant in our contemporary world. If you look around your surroundings, you'll most definitely see a piece of design that was influenced in some way by the modernist movement. Whether that piece of modern design is the chair you're sitting on, the home you live in, or even the computer you're viewing this on, modernism is everywhere, but it wasn't always. The pre-modernist world was filled with ornate and unnecessary design, such as expensive furniture that was excessively heavy for its function, or architecture that was over-engineered to include decorative features which only increased construction costs. These ideas and the complicated and excessive way of living which followed them was phased out by the modernist movement, which focused on design which the form of a product followed its function, designing with the idea of less is more and developing these designs with new, intuitive and innovative materials. These important modernist principles are still taught followed and practiced commonly within our contemporary world. And we owe that to Walter Gropius, one of the key driving forces behind the incredible modernist movement. Walter Gropius, born in Berlin in 1883, was a German architect, but best known as the founder of the Bauhaus. Gropius's interest in architecture was encouraged from a young age, his father taking great interest in architecture and his uncle an established architect himself. Gropius began study at the age of 20, learning architecture in Munich and Berlin. However, Gropius never completed his course, dropping out without taking his final exam, expressing an early disregard for traditional teaching methods. No longer studying, Gropius found work under the wing of renowned architect and industrial designer Peter Burens. Here, he made influential connections with Mies van der Rohe and Le Corbusier working with Behrens on industrial projects such as the AEG Turbine Factory opened Gropius's eyes to new and innovative building materials and techniques. These learnings are evident in the work Gropius conducted on the Fagus Factory, which predates modernism and is an early sign of Gropius's forward-thinking mind. Its modernist materials and geometric form demonstrate a break from the past whilst also showcasing modernist design principles such as simple geometric forms and modern industrial materials such as glass and reinforced concrete. These modernist ideas and principles are further explored and taught by Gropius during his time at the Bauhaus School of Design. In 1919, Gropius became a master at the Grand Ducal Saxonian School of Arts and Crafts, which he reconfigured and renamed the Startleike Bauhaus and Weimar. At the Bauhaus, Gropius focused heavily on combining both fine art and design into one holistic idea. This idea aimed to make art accessible to all, and not only the rich. This curriculum combining architecture, graphic design, and industrial design would lead to the creation of many well-renowned pieces of art and design. A fantastic example of this work is Bauhaus's teacher Marcel Brewer's Seska Chair made up of innovative materials such as tubular steel and cane. The design showcases many modernist design principles, and the chair is true to its materials by making the tubular steel and cane a focal point of the design, instead of hiding them behind plastics and unnecessary design features. This further enforces the chair's simplicity and follows the principle of less is more. When the Bauhaus moved to Dessau in 1925, Gropius was handed a clean slate to create a building which embodied his ideas of modernist design. The Bauhaus Dessau was completed in 1926 and is still a major symbol of the modernist movement. The large wall of glass covering one side of the building underlines Gropius's belief in new industrial materials. But this design feature wasn't just for show. The glass allowed natural light into the studios within the building, which provided a great workspace for those working within the Bauhaus. Gropius' works are fantastic examples of modernism and its design principles. His works are functionalist, minimalistic, and made use of the modern industrial materials of the time. Functionalism was an important principle to modernist design, and so was forgetting the past and focusing on the future. Modernist design aimed to move away from the chaos and destruction 
that was brought upon by World War I, and thus was focused on looking forward, not backwards. Gropius showcases this anti-historian idea by painting the exterior of the Bauhaus des Al white and grey. These neutral tones are not affiliated with any specific culture and their light appearance is symbolic of peace. These same ideas are seen in the design of Gropius' house, Gropius' family home. The white exterior is new and rejects the past. The geometric forms and sleek sharp lines are bold but also minimalistic, and the design makes use of new and innovative materials such as glass in functionalist ways. This piece of architecture was incredibly ahead of its time, so much so that this design still looks modern and futuristic today, over 80 years past its construction. Gropius's works clearly show a mastery of modernist principles and techniques, and are definitely still an inspiration and influence to contemporary artists today. Aoki Sato born in Toronto in 1977, is a designer and founder of Nendo, a contemporary design firm based in Japan. Sato studied at Waseda University in Tokyo, completing his Master of Architecture over six years. He graduated in 2002 and founded Nendo the same year. Just five years later, Sato had progressed from an architecture graduate to a distinguished designer and business owner. And in another five years, Sato had placed himself firmly within the world of design, winning multiple Designer of the Year titles. Although Sato studied architecture, he likes to think of himself as more than just an architect. He's a designer of all fields, not just limited to environmental design. This idea follows in the footsteps of Gropius's United Bauhaus teaching philosophy and may have been a major influence for Sato's personal identity. An entire century has passed since the beginning of modernism, yet modernist ideas and principles are still evident in most design work today. This is apparent in the creations of Nendo. Nendo's cabbage chair is a great example of work influenced by modernist ideas. This chair, made entirely out of recycled paper, is simplistic and shows truth to the innovative materials used whilst being visually appealing and still identifiable as a chair. Sato, unlike Gropius, also believes that form should follow function. However, he also believes that if the form follows function, the function should be fun. Nendo's waterfall tables are a great example of modernist work with Sato's exciting twist of fun. The furniture's form follows its function of being a table in which items can be placed upon, but does so with added flair. Sato also makes use of simple and geometric forms within his work on the commercial complex Kashiyama Daikanyama. The sleek horizontal and vertical lines mirror those of the Gropius house, however the designs are still vastly different in appearance. The use of sustainable materials such as wood on the exterior of the building helped to highlight the progression of contemporary modern design from modernist design. In today's world, there is a large focus on sustainability and ethics. Nendo's My Football Kit looks to improve upon a design that has been unchanged for centuries, the soccer ball, using recycled resin to create panels which can be replaced when broken. The design aims to reduce waste while still providing a product which is functional and visually appealing. Ultimately, Sato has been vastly influenced by Walter Cropius and the modernist movement. This is evident in the modernist principles of Nendo's work. Both designers work with simple, geometric forms, use modern and innovative materials, understand that sometimes less can be more, and most importantly, both designers are driven to design a brighter future. If Sato and Gropius have taught us anything, it's that our actions today will change the world of tomorrow. So, how will you influence Earth's next generation?